Hi, good evening. This is uh, Dr. Kannan again. We have been discussing uh, the possibilities of the Korean and the Indian connection in ancient times. And we also discussed that why it is so difficult to bring this connection to the surface uh, because the Koreans are not so much interested in this part of the history or the so-called Indology and our scholars have no clues about uh, this story because most of the stories related to this uh, could be linked with the Buddhism and the Buddhism has disappeared uh, even from 8th century AD that's what uh, uh, H.O.'s uh, travelogues tell us and so uh, there is some something is missing we don't have folklores but at least uh, in Korea Ilion has actually recorded all the tales and the myths and the people's stories and the songs and so that compiled actually the memorabilia of three kingdoms that's where we get the a story of Kim Suro and uh, Ilion talks about uh, AD 47 okay that's the period he thinks that uh, they arrived there in, 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 in Korea uh, but if you look at the story it has been actually a very challenging story of Chemba I call it Chemba Chemba Valam um, He Hwan Wok that's the that's what uh, the, the Koreans call her He Hwan Wok but if you look at the meaning then it is Sambolam and so the Chemba would have been a really a warrior girl because uh, she had the guts to go all the way from uh, the south of Tamil Nadu to uh, Korea so you can imagine that these things doesn't happen just like that people might have been traveling even before so that a girl can travel okay? and the Jainism doesn't allow this so in Jain people don't cross there uh, see whereas Buddhism allows that and uh, the ancient Tamil uh, society allowed that too and uh, but if you if one looks at it uh, this this story uh, we need to actually look into Adi Chanalur. Adi Chanalur is a place in, in the river Thamarabarani where you see actually this is about 600 BCE that uh, people of different ethnic origins like the Mangaloids, the Africans, the Europeans and the Tamils live together and so Tamils have been traders for ages actually it looks very clear and so with the trade connections okay so she might have actually a uh, Chamba might have gone from Tamil Nadu to all the way to Korea and as you know that traders bring technology like for example uh, the recent history of India is the print was actually brought by the Europeans uh, because they wanted uh, the printing machine for the uh, for their missionary works so in a similar way in, in the ancient times um, iron ore and iron melting smelting is is a important technique that the Tamils developed quite early okay so because of the technology that she took this technology all the way to Kaya and her husband uh, Kim Suro was called as the Iron King but nevertheless this though she went all the way there and they established a, a, a sort of a, a federation it's not a real kingdom because this is mostly a trade related occupation and you know this happened all the time in in the Tamil history uh, that the Tamil traders were very powerful they had their own army and they've been moving around the world and the kings were supporting her so with this kind of a background she went there and and started a federation uh, with Kim Suro and so a federation um, may not be as powerful uh, as like for example the Shilla and Begje, uh, the two other kingdoms there, mostly of Chinese roots. And uh, secondly, the Kaya kingdom is mostly of Tamil roots, okay. They were a little bit dark skinned, and uh, so there was always a conflict between uh, Shilla, Begje, and uh, the Kaya people. And finally, at some point in time, they pushed uh, the Kaya people down south 
into Okinawa and then to Fukuoka in uh, in Japan. But nevertheless, this this trade federation, uh, the Kaya Federation, existed for nearly 400 to 500 years in Korea. Uh, but this brave lady, you know, like who helped to establish this federation in Korea, uh, she has been remembered uh, as almost like a deity. Because even after she uh, passed away, um, her tomb was raided so many times. So she had to fight for her rights even after her death. You know, that's the story of Chamba. It's a very, very beautiful romantic story with a lot of uh, bravery in it. Uh, the so-called Tamil Ahaman Puram, and she has all those things, and uh, that's why uh, she has been remembered and. Uh, most powerful clans of uh, Korea, um, the Kim clan and the He clan, um, they find their roots to this lady from Tamil Nadu called Chambalam or in short Chamba. See you guys later. Bye.